Hi, everyone. Welcome to the first Angel Spirit Show. Welcome. So glad that you joined us. We're going to have an amazing uh, next 60 minutes. I'm going to be talking to an amazing healer. Her name is Tara Neuberger. Uh, she's from Weyburn. And yeah, she's an intuitive healer. Uh, she's an empathic messenger and healer. And she has a lot of information to share with us this evening. So we are going to have just a wonderful time. Uh, this show is all about connecting you uh, with all of the wonderful uh, healers that are out there, intuitive people that are there, so that we can get rid of that dispelling of, uh, you know, that woo-woo stuff. And, you know, energy healing, natural healing goes back thousands and thousands of years. It's been on the universe for so long that we're finally, some of us are finally waking up and uh, tuning into this energy. What is this energy? What is it all about? You know, um, yeah, like all these questions people have, they're kind of leery of the unknown. And I can tell you, I was that way too. I didn't quite understand all of this stuff as well, but I'm so glad that I finally uh, opened up to the energy of the universe and yeah, the, the people that I have been meeting on my journey. Yeah. So the show is all about connecting you to get to, you know, get to know who's out there. There's people all over the universe. Uh, I've been in this uh, field now for uh, probably about 12 years now, since 2006, I believe. And uh, I've been on it my whole entire life. And uh, yeah. So yeah, Tara's going to be here, and I think she's already joined us. So I was just talking a little bit. Hi, Tara. How are you? Good. How are you? Good, good, good. There we go. Awesome. awesome. Welcome, welcome. I was just talking about the universe and about the energy that's out there and available to everybody and uh, started a little introducing about who you are. And uh, yeah, so I told them that you're from Weyburn. Right. And I told everybody that you are an empathic messenger and healer and that we're going to spend the next 60 minutes just talking about maybe not 60 minutes, however long the universe wants us to talk or how long it's going to take us. It doesn't really matter. You know, it's just whatever we need to talk about. So welcome, welcome, welcome. You're my well, first guest. I know. I'm excited and honored to be your first guest. Oh, I know. I'm so honored. Thank you for uh, uh, agreeing to be on the show. And thank you for uh, answering all my questions. And yeah, the kind of the pre-interview that we had yesterday, that was, uh, that was amazing. So yeah, I guess I just want to start off by you know, getting people to know who you are. So if you just want to tell us a little bit about uh, how you uh, got into energy healing, maybe we can start with that. Because, uh, you know, everybody has a story. Everybody has um, an experience. And we all, you know, we need to share those experiences with people so they know that uh, maybe they're experiencing the same thing too, and they quite don't understand it. So, he, you know, we can mentor people, we can show people or try and help them along their journey too. So maybe we'll start with that. Just, yeah, how did you get started on your journey, Tara? On my journey? Um, well, I was at a Lumpston, or no, sorry, a Lapman trade show. And I was, okay. my, I was selling Sensi at the time. And across from me was a lady, Colleen Marcotte, who um, had pendulums and the cards and a booth set up. She was doing readings. I had no idea what any of that was, but I was really interested in it. So I kept going across to her booth and chatting with her and looking at her stuff and just a little bit of wonder. And she stops me and she goes, you have a vortex in your house and I need to clear your house. I'm like, oh, okay. Not having a clue what she meant. And I'm like, so you want to come over when we get home tonight? And she's like, no, 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 I'll just do it here. And I'm like, what? Okay. So she took her pendulum, and she'd never been to my house, didn't know where I lived, and she went through each room of my house, clearing it. And as she entered each room, she would say what the room was used for until she got to where the vortex was and cleared it out and everything for me. And then a couple of weeks later was the full moon. And I was just feeling yucky and stuck and miserable. I didn't know what was going on with me, and so I... I uh, inboxed her and I said, hey, what are the chances you're at your, your spirit job and not your human job today? She goes, oh, yeah, I'm at the office what time, or at the shop. What time's your lunch? 
She said, just pop over. I'll do a quick 45-minute session with you. So I walked in, and before I even sat down, she's like, well, no wonder you feel so icky. She goes, I laugh when I see you because I see hundreds of souls with you. She goes, and they just follow you around, waiting patiently for you to talk to them. And I'm like, what? <laughs> and then most of, my, most of my reading that day was about my abilities. And she, so she's the one that really started opening me up about it. And the in, thing I find interesting about that is I had suffered from migraines probably at least once, once a week I would get a migraine. And since then, I've maybe had two, and that was almost three years ago. Wow, wow, wow. So yeah. from the migraines, was this something that she did, a energy healing on you, or did she, was this through the reading session that she did with you? Just the reading session and then getting my thought process that, hey, yeah, I do. She helped me remember what I was able to do. And that's what I say. We're not really teaching. We're mentoring. We're helping people remember what they've already done and what they're already able to do. Yeah, so that's a very good point. Yeah, and we do need people to guide us too, right? Because, you know, we're experiencing, uh, you know, we start feeling energy. That's where I started, as I started feeling energy and I started feeling that I was, I've always felt that I was different. You know, right. I always felt that I could, I could um, read people really quickly and I didn't know what this was all about. And uh, I knew which people to stay away from. I knew which people were lying to me. Like I knew so much about people. Not that I could read their minds. It's just in, I had my internal knowledge or my internal uh, system was telling me, you know, okay, Maureen, you better stay away from this person. And, you know, but I didn't really tap into it. But I, I did trust it. Like I, I did follow it. Uh, but not like I do now. So, yeah. So Colleen really, she really awoken uh, or she kind of gave you a guidance or kind of gave you, um, um, I, I want to say an awakening. I don't know if that's the right word. Kind of, that's, kinda... that's kind of, she awoken me what had been laying dormant. Like obviously with the yeah. headaches, and there was little things like, you know, a lot of deja vu and, you know, I've been here, I've done this, I've smelt this, I've tasted this, I've said those words before. Um, and then she was instrumental in me carrying on because she held, um, an angel card reading class that I went to and then through her and Carly at some soul matrix, they had ads on about the gentleman who I'll, I will for all intents and purpose calls my call my mentor, um, David Wolvansky. And so I was able to take some, some classes through him, some courses. I don't even know what to call them. Some remembering sessions, I guess. I don't know um, what to call it. And, and I remember my yeah, first so class. Started. I remember my first class, I went in there and I, I felt like I was at home. I just said, wow, these ladies are amazing. Like, it's just like they were my best friends. Those classes are amazing for people to go to because you get to, you get introduced to people that think like us, even though we didn't, I didn't realize at the time that uh, that was going to happen, <clears throat> but that's amazing. So, you know, you're on this path, you're on this journey, you get introduced to this lady, you didn't even, weren't even aware of your ability. And you know, when you come across this lady, don't you love the way the universe works? Don't you just oh, absolutely. love the Absolutely. Absolutely. Had I been on the opposite side of the room with her, who knows, right? Yeah, exactly. So you had, you know, what, you know, what did you see in her? Like, why did you go to her table? Like, what, what would be the thing, if you can go back and remember, what was the thing you know, that made you go there? Do you know? Really? I was, I, I felt that, like the pendulums were calling me. Okay. Okay. So her actual pendulums. Okay. So yeah, the energy of the pendulums yeah. are amazing. Like they really, you know, I think the pendulums really attract us, right? Oh. Yeah. So can Sorry. you tell, yeah. So can you tell the viewers kind of your, when you were growing up, did, were you uh, like, were you attracted to this energy? Did you know anything about any of this stuff? Like you said, Colleen helped you with this stuff, but how, how, like, were your parents intuitive? Were your, your grandparents intuitive? Like my grandma, you know, they, they, my like grandma, both of my grandmas are very, very intuitive. I like to say my one aunt probably was. I know she had tarot cards growing up. Um, I'd love to say my dad was a little bit, but nothing that they really came out and admitted. Like it wasn't, it wasn't something that we talked about in our house. It was almost taboo, right? I, I've always loved astrology, um, you know, getting my um, 
daily horoscope reading. Always, I was always interested in that. And even before that, I think I love to be outside. I love to be in nature. And that's where a lot of energy, you know, that's where we get grounded. That's where we, you know, feel at home when we get unsettled. I like to go stand barefoot. I still go barefoot so much today. But as a child, it was hard for my mother to keep me inside. And again, that's going back to the deja vu. Like I remember even, you know, as young as maybe five, six, thinking, did I really say those words now? Or is it something that I've said earlier? It was like, I remember being in this spot at this time before. So I don't know, it was kind of... Cool, cool, cool. So neat. really, um, when you're going to school, if you want to talk a little bit about your childhood, <clears throat> did, did you feel different their children like did you get dreams did you uh like kind of just how how did you interact with the other people around you when you were smaller when you were um, I've always inter interacted really well with people um I think I always felt older like why like like you know I always felt like an old soul right yeah. um I, and I didn't um I didn't really fit into any clique you know I was friends with people from this clique I was friends with people from that clique and I think you know I didn't really have a, a set group of friends. I kind of was friends and not friends with everybody. You know how high school years are, right? <laughs> and I just couldn't, that, that, I couldn't fit into a clique. Yes. You know, that's exactly how I was too. I was friends with the jocks. I was friends with the, the, well, right. the ones that weren't so popular. Like I just kind of hung out with everybody. I never really had a group of people. So yeah. isn't, that, isn't that something? You know, you that's were... I was, yeah. Yeah, I was in PA, and you were in Weyburn, and wherever you grew up. Did you grow up in Weyburn? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so, you know, and we probably had a similar growing up, because, uh, well, my parents never talked about it, but I know my dad was very, very intuitive. He always knew when something was going to happen, and mom, my mom was very intuitive as well, but it was never talked about, and uh, yeah, so it's like, you get you don't under, you don't understand it. So I think now the kids are more t attuned to these energies, and I'm so happy parents are starting to open up. You know, like I do see a lot of parents they bring their children, and we and we work with helping them understand their gifts or their abilities to understand energy because that's basically what it is is energy. So can you tell us a time? kind of your aha moment, like were you a child, were you a teenager, were you an adult? What was your um, aha Well, I've had several. So my first one was obviously with Colleen and that, um, and that day actually of my reading, of course my mind's spinning 100 miles because this is like so new and so um, not norm for me. So I was driving home and um, listening to the CD she had made for me, because she recorded our, our session. And I kept getting this message, and it was such a weird message. And I'm like, okay, is this me? Or is it, you know, me making something in my mind? Is it a true message? Like, I need a sign. And I'm still very much about, I need a sign if this is true. So I'm driving to my parents' house. I get in the driveway, I shut off my car. Well, my, my car phone comes on, my sink comes up. And there's no name, there's no number. It's like star two two six four nine two star star. Going, that's really odd, really really odd. And then um, um, I I said hello, can I help you? And, and all I got, it's like I'm already freaked out a little bit by what Colleen's told me. I'm just like, oh my god, shut the, and I couldn't shut the phone off. It's like I couldn't end the call. And so I'm going, hello can I help you? And this time I'm just terrified. And again, I get the, so I grab my phone out of my purse. I end the call finally on my phone, run into my parents. And I don't know why I did this, but I checked for my call logs and all my logs are wiped clean. There's not a phone number, nothing. They're all wiped clean. And then I go to my settings. Cause I'm like, this is freaking me right out. And again, why I would check that. I don't know. Other than it was a, it was a message. It was a sign for me, right? So I check my Bluetooth, and my Bluetooth is shut off, right? And that's the only way my sync works if my Bluetooth is on. So I was just like, "Oh crap!" Oh. <laughs> I guess that was my message, and that was, and that was uh, it. Um, and my and my second aha moment was um, not shortly after one of Colleen's classes, her first class she taught me. Um, I was asked to help somebody if I could help a family friend. And um, it wound up that um, I was 
granted the honor of helping find the boy's missing body. Wow. So that was another aha uh -huh moment. Mm -hmm. And my last one, um, well, not my last one. Well, yeah, my last one. Um, there's been many others since, but um, when I walk into some rooms, people that are feel energy, they're like, oh my God, your energy is just like blasting me away. Or the one lady said, when I walked into the class, she saw purple flash across the table over to the facilitator. And I, I don't feel that, right? I don't know if you feel your own energy. I don't feel my own energy. I don't know what it feels like. Um, so at my expo, I had this one client come in and they sat down at my table and I just said, oh, I get it. <laughs> I was just like, oh, that's the energy everybody is telling me about. So that was fairly cool for me. It was just like, oh, that's what they mean when they say I zap them. Oh, you just gave me goosebumps. That's so true. <laughs> Yes, I yes. When, when I, I, I don't feel my own energy, but uh, when I have classes, people always tell me they can, they see, the intuitives will see the energy around me. Uh, okay. I have a lot of angels around me, a lot of guides too that are helping me, but uh, yeah, that's kind of cool. And then, you know, do, you talked about expos and uh, those aha moments. Uh, that's where a lot of my aha moments are happening now is with meeting with clients, uh, at expos, or even sessions too. But I do want to talk about uh, when I came and seen you at the last expo last weekend at Weyburn. You know, I had a fall. My, my neck's been bothering me probably for close to two months now. And I, I've done massages. I've done like, I've done energy healing. I've seen other healers. I've done my own healing. And it just it was getting better, but it just wasn't quite there. I could still feel that pain. So I was guided. Like I just had this, I just had this knowing that I had to see you. And I'm so glad you had time in your schedule because you were so busy at the expo. It was just so awesome to watch. And I was so happy for you. And I remember asking you for, I wanted, of course, I'm always saying what I want. I wanted a, I wanted an access bar session. And, right. you know, we started with the access bars and it just didn't feel right. I didn't feel right about it either. So, okay, Tara, do whatever you need to do because I need help with my neck. So can we talk about a little bit about how you knew what to do with me and kind of talk about the session, maybe how you get prepared for a session, you know, what you did for me for that session. I would really like to share the viewers so they just can kind of understand what you're, you know, what we're doing when we're doing healing sessions. If you wouldn't mind talking about that. Oh, for sure. So what I do yeah. is I get myself grounded and I kind of tap into your energy. So you know, just maybe close my eyes, ask the spirit guides, mine and yours to come in. Um, you know, I ask God for guidance because that's where these messages come from. And, and our healing comes, we're actually, I don't consider myself a healer. I consider my tool through which God or creator, whatever your higher source is, that's who I consider, I consider it a gift. So I'll call on them. And then <laughs> I was the same. I'm like, okay, she really wants access bars. I'm going to give her access bars. And I started running your bars and I'm just like, oh, this is okay. Oh, I don't want to do this anymore. And I just was like, I don't know how to tell her. Like, it's different if you're with a client that doesn't know as much as we do. But I'm like, she really wants these bars. And so I was so glad when you go, Tara, you can just do whatever you want. You don't have to do bars. I was like, thank God. Because it was just not working for me. Um, so what I do is I um, intuitively will scan a body. And so just kind of with my hands, just feeling the energy. And when it changes is kind of when it's a block for me. And also when I hit a spot that has an energy block, my shoulders tense. So it's like, oh, that's the spot. And, um, and then I just get a picture on my mind because I don't, I don't, I've chosen not to see things. Like I won't see an entity. I'll feel it. I'll just know it's there. I'll get a mental picture of it or I won't like a lot of people just see it right out. And then I just pictured there was this serpent that was curled around in your shoulder and coming down your clavicle into your heart. And this thing was just stinging and putting its venom into your heart, which was also tracing back into your, into your shoulder. And I said, that's what's causing me that pain. That snake has to get out of her shoulder. Um, so yeah, so it was just a, a matter of removing that that snake and then channeling in some some healing Reiki into your heart, and um, you know asking Raphael to seal all the wounds and to leave a hole though so the poison from the snake could still still drain out, and then just yeah, closing everything up. And... Wow, I fe I felt amazing. Like I I just 
it just felt like, yeah, that was a heavy energy. So, you know, sometimes people's thoughts, like even though they may not intend to send that kind of energy to people, like that serpent was a de definitely a heavy energy. And people need to realize that that's just energy that we're seeing. It's not an actual live serpent. It right. It's actually, yeah. Yeah. It's exactly, it's... just so you know, viewers, it's actually an <laughs> I didn't really pull a serpent, a snake out of her back by any means, but that's, that's what that energy looked like to me. It looked like. Yeah, that's what like it looked like to her. So that, yeah, yeah, so people can, can give us bad thoughts because thoughts are energy yeah. and they can actually direct that kind of energy to people without even knowing. It doesn't even have to be on purpose. It could just be something that they're upset with you and then, they, and then they just say bad thoughts or think bad things and then that transpires, that energy goes towards that people. So we really have to be careful with our thoughts. And I really love how the late uh, Wayne Dyer, how he talks about the energy and about our thoughts. I've been listening to a lot about his CDs. I love listening to the CDs, the knowledge that he has. So. You know, when we're doing our work and when we're communicating, can you tell the viewers a little bit about what you do? You talked about the session of grounding yourself. Is there other other ways that you get ready for sessions or get yourself ready for healings or readings or, you know, work that you do? Is there other tools or techniques you want to share with people? Um, mostly it's just tapping into them. So let's say I'm at, uh, um, I'm doing something where the people are pre-booked. So I'll take a list of that, look at that list and, and, and start tapping into them earlier on and just prayer, dear Lord, please help me help these people today. Please help me to find what they need. Um, and then I usually call on uh, my, my spirits for healing are Mother Teresa and Mother Mary. Very gentle, gentle. So you see some people will come in and they're like, like boom, like they're a, they're a strong um, healing i'm gonna push this in and push this out where mine is a lot more gentle like if you think of mother Teresa and mother mary they're very gentle loving loving souls so then i'll have a little visit with them and just say okay guys let's go to work and then um yeah and usually i have like some some kind of incense beforehand if we can a lot of places don't allow scent but um i have a little can of um sage spray that i'll spray and just kind of get the air and area ready to go and cleaned up and and then of course to shield yourself that's most important to them um, usually I put up a Raphael and a, a Michael I ask them to wrap their wings around me and and protect me and to put a shield up so that um some of the negative stuff won't will just bounce off and won't try to harm me as well that's beautiful I love that so do you do, is there like um, uh, something that you do on a daily basis so that uh, you can keep your energy, your vibration high? Like, is there meditations that you do if they're so like, what kind of meditations do you do? Do you do yoga? Do you like, what do you do to keep your yeah. vibration high so that you can, well, you know, started, so, so you can. Sorry. Yeah, I've yeah. started doing no, yoga okay. during the day. It's uh, in sometimes the morning, sometimes in the evening. I try to fit it in. And sometimes it's just whatever you can fit in into the day right sometimes we don't make it's not that we don't have the time we don't make the time to take that half an hour to do the meditation but i have one that i can play in the car i have um the peace mantra um i, do, I like to do cacao cacao meditation so i might mm -hmm. sip it, uh, cacao in the morning before i start getting on with my day and just sit and and think on that and i do have two songs that i play almost every morning and um, they're about love and loving yourself to know that you're loved yes, Thing. yes that's yeah that's beautiful that's beautiful yes yeah so meditation I've, i think really helps me to switch at the end of the day even i'm just laying on the bed and just saying okay creator god just release any negative energy that's attached to me throughout the day because people's thoughts can be negative too right and uh so and it may not mean to send it our way so we have to as healers we really have to keep our vibration high and i find water really helps me too being yes. close to water just really calms me and it and uh i just feel so rejuvenated and water is so healing it's an amazing thing what i really want to talk about too is you know you're you have been involved with some missing persons uh 
cases and I know that you've been working uh, with the local authorities and helping uh, locate missing people. Can you tell us a little bit a little bit about that too so the viewers can understand like some of the work that you're doing is authentic work that you're doing. You're helping distraught people, families, you're helping the police get clues on, on uh, you know, missing files. Can you talk a little bit about that work that you're doing? I think it's so fascinating. I just love yes. it. I can. Um, there's actually been one that I've actually helped them find. Um, they did question me about two other ones. And it was just super cool. So you never know what impression you leave on people. So always try to be, you know, forthright and always try to be loving and, and be your, your authentic self. So this one lady inboxed me and she said, I remember you from one of our courses together and you were the only one that didn't have to use the book and blah, blah, blah. And she goes, I'd really like you to help my friend. And I said, okay, I'll help, like, without even thinking, oh, what is it? Like, that would be the normal first thing to ask is, okay, what is it? I'm just like, oh, yeah, sure. And it was to um, help find a, a, a young man that was missing. And um, so I went and met with his parents, their parents, and uh, and it was interesting. It was a step-by-step -step thing where the soul would show me, okay, they need to start looking here. So then they'd go look there and then they'd text. We didn't find him. And then he would say, okay, now they were so close, but you have to look for this tree standing by itself or you have to look for this water. And he just kept giving me little baby steps. So then they'd find that and that would take them a step closer. And then um, he just kept on. And it was super cool being empathic. I also felt how he felt. So the one time he was, at first he was cold and scared and then and nobody's coming to find me. And then the next feeling I got was frustration because why did they turn left? They should have turned right. I'm right there kind of a thing. And then, and then actually at the end, then when I felt his joy that he'd been found, it was just surreal, absolutely surreal. And then, yeah, there's a couple other cases that, that are pending that, yeah. Oh, awesome. You know that and people need that, you know, it's uh just a little bit of guidance, a little bit of support. I was part of a group. There's the psychics. We were part of a group looking for uh, a missing person in Fort Capel. And uh, the energy of all the psychics coming together, we were texting each other with all our clues. It was so powerful. And they actually found him. They found him. Uh, we seen where we seen the house that he was in. We seen the trees. Uh, one second, actually seeing the outside lawn, and it was so cool. And and the mom uh, was able to guide it to where he was, even though they checked that place already where he was. Uh, they were hiding him. His brother was hiding him, oh, wow. and uh, he said, "You know, that's the house." We described the way it looked. We described the tree. Uh, we described so much of it that had the police went back to look, and they found him. So, that so you know, that is so amazing. Like, you know. Uh, we need people need to know that there's other ways uh to help it's not that we're going to solve all the the, the mystery oh, that's not. out there right. no but i mean if we get that connection and people are connected with us uh we can definitely help within that way uh but it does take energy right it does take energy you know and what if we give the wrong clues you know that's you know, always that was, fear yeah, yeah that's always in the back but we really got to trust our intuition we really have to trust our guides we really have to trust that higher power that great spirit universe whatever that guiding force is that's whole you know that's guiding us we need to trust that can you tell the viewers a little bit about how you trust that intuition how you trust you know the guidance that you're getting do you ever second guess it <laughs> um oh always you second guess it right but basically um whatever comes into your head just should just go out your mouth right whatever message you get now having said that not every message is meant for the person you're working with so sometimes it's a message that just needs to go in just so you know something about that person or you know the, the deceased person is trying to talk to this person sometimes it's not always a message for that client but basically that's how um how i was taught to remember is that whatever thought comes in your head comes right out your mouth just so it might sound like the totally ridiculous thing you've ever heard on the earth but remember the message isn't for you the message is for that other person that's in that room for you so it might not mean anything to you and it might not mean anything to them right then and there 
But then right. usually, if I get a message like that in the beginning of a session, usually by the end of the session, the person's going, oh, oh yeah, by the way. Yeah. And I've had that happen yeah. several times where all of a sudden it's like, oh, that's what apples meant, <laughs> you know? Yeah. You know, because yeah. 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 Like, yeah. Like the messages are so off the wall, but you can't be afraid to say them, right? You have to, you have to blurt them out because it may not make, right. It may not make sense right then, but it, it all comes together. Eventually you can't back down, right? You got to be, keep going forward and you got to keep giving those messages. Can you tell the viewers a little bit about, uh, uh, you had mentioned that this is your duty or your calling in life. It's, it's, if, if you will, you, you call it your duty. Can you just explain a little bit about what you mean by you're calling this your duty when you're helping people? You just Can you just kind of talk about that a bit? Well, I feel that it's, it's been a gift that's been given to me. And, and I think with that gift comes great, great responsibility as well. So if I can help, why shouldn't I help? That's what I meant to do, right? So why would I continue to let that person hurt or to, you know, somebody's walking around with a burnt finger. Hey, I can help ease that pain a little bit. Here, just give me your hand. Um, you know, the ones that you can't approach definitely will not be non-responsive non to you, but yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's a duty. It's, uh, it's, it's what I meant to do to help, to heal, and not just to, to, to get those messages myself, but to see, help other people see that they also have intuitiveness because we all have it. It's just a matter of, of how much of it we're gifted. And we have different gifts, right? Because you, you don't heal the same way I heal. You don't get your messages the same way I get my messages. And, you know, 27 people in a room will all have 20, 27 different ways of how they get their messages and how they, and how they pass that message on to a client, right? It's with what you feel comfortable with. But I so agree. That, that is such an awesome, awesome point. Uh, you know, because we're all unique, you know, and our souls are all unique. So we're all going to be communicating a different way. And I, I love that because uh, I know that uh, we all are, you know, we all have intuition. You're right. Uh, just like everybody knows how to sing. Some of us are better singers. <laughs> I'm not going to get you to sing by the I'm way. not going to prove how bad I am at that. <laughs> <laughs> but we all can sing, right? Right. Where there's all that capability. Time. You know, we have the capability. It's the same with intuition. We all have intuition. If some of us uh, are just born natural intuitives, and some of us maybe have to work a bit at it, but we all can work on it, right? We all have that ability. So I think that kind of takes a woo-woo out of it or dispels, uh, you know, I think it's energy, all energy healers have to trust their intuition. You know, it's not something that's... Um, I don't know what the word I'm looking for, but it's it, people just, they're so fearful of the unknown, you know, and that's why we're here tonight is to let people Absolutely. know that we're, you know, we're just ordinary people. We're just ordinary ladies. Uh, we, but, and we're just more tapped into our abilities or more tapped into our intuition. I don't know what I would do without my intuition now. I could oh, no, not no. go back to that. <laughs> oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> quite a feeling especially when you can see that you've helped somebody you know like that's so and even it might not be a physical thing you've helped them with but you've helped them with um you know some kind of of angst that they've had some kind of you know maybe they've been really anxious about something or like there's something that i'm missing what is it and then you you talk with them and then they're able to work through what they do i think the one thing i want people to know is we're not fortune tellers by any means you know, we're not the voodoo people. We're not dark. Yes. To yes. be afraid of things, and quite, quite frankly, we're we're the, we're the opposite, right? Like, we get to set the parameters. So my parameter is: I am a light worker. I'm a light warrior. I fight the dark, and um, but everything I do is for the higher good of the client, for the you know, for the higher good of the universe, and um, I. I just put the barrier out there that nothing from the dark. No, that doesn't mean that every message is a good message or the perfect message. Sometimes it may be a little sad, but the messages I find are giving to us in such a way um, to be tactful and to be light and to not cause harm. And that's the one vital thing is, is I put out there to, to do no harm. Always. No, that's perfect. Yes. With light yes. and love always. 
Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah, you know, sometimes with me, people are afraid of the fallen angels. Well, I've never met a fallen angel. I don't even know what a fallen angel looks like. It's all about light and love. When you work with God, when you work with that higher power, uh, they're only going to bring you that that light and love there's you know there is darkness in the world because we live in a world of duality right there's right and wrong good and bad you know so and there's light and there's dark and uh, as light workers uh we work in that light and we work in and show and, and shining that light for others so they can you know have a better life we don't have to suffer you know why suffer why suffer emotionally, spiritually, physically? Why? We don't have to. And we have these natural healing abilities or these natural healing um, ways of helping ourselves and our clients. Can you tell the viewers a little bit about the work that you do in Weyburn? You know, like what kind of services do you offer? Uh, yeah, just kind of let them know what you do. Oh, for sure. So um, I don't have a, a spot for myself. I will rent um, Carly's shop. I do do the expos and I will go to people's houses to, um, to do stuff. And for me, it's not um, today I'm going to do only angel card readings. Today I'm doing Reiki. Um, it's, it's a hat of many colors that I wear per se. So when you come for me for a session, it's like, okay, come on in and let's see what you need. Oh, and some people say, well, I want a card reading. And this was interesting as this one time in my deal, I had this lady that um, wanted a card reading. She'd never been to an intuitive before and she just wanted a card reading. I'm like, well, okay. Well, I shuffled the cards and shuffled the cards and shuffled the cards and nothing's coming for her. So I looked, I said, do you mind if I do a quick past life regression on you? And that's basically putting a, a client into a, into a light trance, hypnotic trance, and then letting their soul travel to wherever they want to go. And some people go back, some people go forward, and some people just stay in this time period. But um, she just needed to go in and go back in, her, in this life now and make sure that a door was locked so that I couldn't get into what she didn't want me to know, that she didn't want the world to know. She had a secret and she just needed to know that it was safe. So once she was able to check that door, I brought her back out of the trance and the cards just popped for her. So that was, that was cool um, to see that. And, I, and so, yeah, sometimes it's just a combination. Well, okay, you need to get on my Reiki table because I need to do this. But sometimes during the Reiki, it's like, oh, well, this gentleman's just entered the room and his spirit is like this and he's saying this. And, and so they'll just... Kind of when your energy, when my energy anyways gets flowing, it's attracting everything else. So like the angel messages are coming in, the spirit is probably coming in. And uh, yeah, so that's kind of how one of a session with me goes. Um, I also um, do do the geopathic land clearing, geopathic. And that's, awesome. that's Can you tell us a little, a little bit I, about that? Like, can you tell us a little bit about that? Like, do you, can you tell us about a time that, you cleared something from a property, what you, what you did when you went in there and do you, can you share a little bit about that? Well, probably the coolest one is, is a group of us. There was, I believe four of us went into this house and um, the one child was having troubles and was t having night terrors. And the one other child couldn't sleep in the bedroom, in the bed and just different odd things were happening. And it turned out that this house had been in a fire. And this grandfather figure kept coming to try and teach this the son or the youngest child how to how to to um, how to see things. And the child, of course, didn't want anything to do with it, so it became unfriendly almost. And then we all went downstairs into the one bedroom, and I uh, they're just like she just cannot sleep normally in her bed. She sleeps with her head down and can't sleep and. So I laid on the bed and I went, well, no wonder. And here they had this old kind of closet thing, um, like a wardrobe, but just different. And it was facing the mirror. And so there was an entity attached to that, that dresser, that wardrobe. But then the reflection in the mirror reflected back into her bed. So she was actually seeing this entity, the reflection of this entity, and it wasn't allowing her to sleep at night. So I said, that thing has to go. And then another girl came in and goes, oh, yeah, that has to go. You have to get that out of here. And uh, I think they finally did did remove it because every one of us said, that has to go. That wow. definitely has to go. And wow. Yeah, so we wow, just spent wow. the whole day doing the whole process of 
of doing a clearing and Awesome. So, you know, just so the viewers know, entities are actually energy and they're trapped spirits. They haven't gone over to the light yet. They haven't gone to the side yet. And they're trapped between this uh, and bar or this realm or this dimension, the third dimension. They haven't gone on to see uh, the higher, the light yet. So when energy healers go in to clear entities, we're actually helping them go to God or helping them go to that higher power. So we need that. People don't realize uh, that that energy can be attached to, to objects. Like you just talked about the mirror. Uh, and uh, kids are so intuitive. They, they really uh, are connected with the energy. So uh, that, that, kudos on those parents to get you guys to come out there yeah. and clear the space and knowing that there was something there that needed to be released did the parents tell you after how the space was after you did all that clearing it was it was good out? for a while it was good for a while but i think mm -hmm. one of the ladies that assisted me said she did have to go up and go out and do some more okay clear, yeah. Clear. yeah yeah so sometimes it might take a few sessions to clear the space. You know, there could be other stuff. Once you clear something, something else could come. And energy is moving all the time, right? So people can Absolutely. actually bring things to folks too. So, yeah. So, but just knowing that, that that's a possibility. So if you have a house and it feels really heavy or a space is really heavy, Tara is your gal. She can come and help you. Do you travel? Do you travel to places to do, yes. energy, to do uh, space clearings? Yes. Sure would yeah perfect yeah yeah do you have like a team of yeah i have a team awesome. of gals that had call on yeah Goodness. say hey ladies right. I think I that's, help that's an awesome awesome service to have okay so you talked about reiki you talked about uh your readings you talked about property clearings uh are you teaching are you you're doing i understood no. that you just you need Reiki master, congratulations. Yeah, yeah, just on the weekend I became a Reiki master teacher. Yeah. So the plan is, I think that's the next, um, the next step for me, is to definitely um, start teaching, not just Reiki, but the whole, the whole shebang and kind of, I don't really call it teaching, I'm, I'm going to start helping people remember, remember what they already know and to, and to um, tap into their gifts, because a lot of people have it but don't know what to do with it, right? And that's what, like, when I first started, it was just like, okay, well, she's told me I'm a medium, and now I'm starting to feel this, and yeah, I'm going to get a deck of cards. I don't know what I'm going to do with them. But that was the thing. Right then, I had no real, like, what do I do with it? Right? So I think there's a lot of that out there that people have the ability, they have the gift, but what, what do you do with this now, right? So I'd like to get some courses exactly. starting and get going with that. That'd be awesome. We need you. We need you to do that. People need to understand their gifts and they need to understand in a way that you can explain what you've gone through, you know, just to have to have that guidance so people understand. And uh, yeah, and the energy, um, those classes are going to be amazing. I can't wait to, uh, to oh, start offering them. I'll be coming to you. Yay. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Yay. So can you tell the viewers, uh, if, if there's anything else that you want to share with them about, um, you know, the work that you do. Uh, okay. Can you tell us your people job? I forgot to ask that question. Oh, what do you people do? Job? I work, yeah. I work at the actual department at the hospital. Oh, cool. Yeah. As cool. a medical office assistant. So um, I've been yeah, there for so almost three years and then I was 15 years before that at a doctor's office. So cool, some cool, cool. neat yeah. energies. <laughs> Yeah, For so you sure must meet a lot of people in your people job that could really use some energy healing. <laughs> Absolutely. You know? yeah. And sometimes they get yeah. a little tough without knowing it. <laughs> Just yeah. Like here. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's that's cool. Probably yeah, that's the cool. one thing I want to tell people is is to not be afraid of it. Um I mean it's it's daunting when you first start because you don't know what's gonna come, but um don't don't be afraid of it. Because you, you have, and that's what a lot of people don't understand is that you set the boundaries, you set the rules. So like for me, my husband was like, not in my house. I do not want that in my house. I'm like, okay, well, you know what? I'm going to take one room in the house. So basically it was like, okay, spirits, this is where you can talk to me. Um, you can only come here when I'm at home. You can't continue to follow me to work. And I will talk to you between the hours of five and seven. 
you know, or, hey, guys, not today, I'm too tired. And they don't realize that you can set those boundaries. And it was really cool because I did have an entity attached to me whose name was Charlie. So uh, this one thing where um, we were practicing our mediumship, and so people were, were lining outside the door to get in, right? And uh, I put it out there, I go, but I won't see any Charlies. And one of the other ladies, because we had a group that we were practicing our mediumship, she goes, oh, five guys just stepped out of line. <laughs> And the one's really upset that you wouldn't let Charlie's in. I'm like, I am not dealing with Charlie today. I know where Charlie came from. And so that was super cool to kind of validate that I could make that rule, right? That I could set that boundary. And I'm not saying that nothing dark will ever get in. But like I said, I don't work with the dark, right? Have they come after me? Absolutely. And then you just, you just deal with it, um, Hopefully you're able to. If not, I would recommend getting help. Like if you're feeling kind of icky and darkness settling in, then just ask one of your co-healers. Just say, hey, I'm feeling a little icky. Can you tap in and see what you're... And I'm really blessed that way because I have people that I can just text and say, hey, you want to take a quick scan and see what's attached? And then and then they'll go, hey, yuck. <laughs> you got to get rid of that. Or, you know, they'll say what they feel it is and I can work through it myself, right? Uh, so we always need each other. That's one thing. And another thing is um, the struggle I've had is with religion, right? Mm -hmm. is, uh, is I was born and raised uh, Lutheran. My mother's a Lutheran lay minister. And we've always had a very Christian, Christian upbringing. So it was kind of tough to get that balance, right? And um, I actually had a two and a half hour meeting with my with my minister and and that really calm me helped to calm me down well it was after another so-called christian fellow and his wife attacked me um for my my mediumship work where they didn't want to see me in the hall right so i was giving them information about being a light worker i was giving them information about you know healing and i was giving but all they were concerned was with that just little mediumship part the part where i talked to spirits and they came with bibles in hand to um to fight me basically is how I felt. I felt that they really were attacking me. And so my minister said, you know, how did you feel before you went into that meeting? I said, I was really calm and at peace. He goes, how did you feel after that meeting? I said, I felt very chaotic and crying and I was really upset and just questioning everything in my life. And he goes, so I recommend the next time you see them that you say, get behind me, Satan. Cause he goes, Satan brings chaos, God and light and angels bring the calm and the peace that you had before. And uh, it was a really interesting two and a half hour meeting. And, and by the end, I felt all right. He said, I said, but I pray, I pray that if it isn't right, that God takes it away, that God makes it stop. And he got really upset with me and he pointed a finger and he goes, how dare you? And I just went, whoa, I'm getting goosebumps. And he goes, how dare you? If your husband gave you a fur coat as a gift, would you throw that fur coat back in his face? I'm like, oh, no, that's ridiculous. It's a fur coat. He goes, well, God has given you a gift that is a thousand times more um, better for you than that fur coat. So who are you to throw that gift back in God's face? He goes, how dare you? And I just went, all right. He said, um, I've seen a change in you. You've, you have become peaceful in the last couple of years. And he'd known me for 11 years. And he said, I have seen a change in you. He goes, I can see and I know without a, a doubt that Jesus Christ lives and reigns within your heart and he said I can see your compassion and he goes I also feel that you have the gift of discernment and you know right from wrong and good from bad when you meet people he said that is another gift mm -hmm. and he said for your mediumship for the spirits from the dead he goes could it not be that those angels that are giving you messages are also bringing you messages on behalf of, of that spirit so it's not actually a spirit per se you're talking to, but the angels. He goes, and for the parts that you feel aren't right, that go against your faith, could you not pray every night, dear God, whatever I've done in your sight that is unjust or not right in your eyes, please forgive me. And I went, oh, yeah, that kind of makes sense. So that really helped me, you know, with that whole faith struggle. And part of the way I separate it is my faith is my, and my religion is my faith. And it's kind of, the rules of my faith it's the the getting together with like-minded people right that's what we say when we get together as healers and, and intuitives and likewise with the church i'm getting together with like-minded people with the church now my spirituality is that 
as my relationship with my higher spirit with with god is my as my higher spirit and everybody has their own right so to me that has really strengthened that spiritual connection to a higher source is amazing and um, i'm very grateful for it for sure i love that i love how you worded that every you know you don't have um that's the biggest struggle I think healers have is the religion and the spirituality. You know, they are similar <clears throat> in the way that religion gives us that faith. It gives us that faith with God, that the higher power, but the spirituality really is our spirit with God, right? Yep. Like our spirit is so alive and, and, and God is guiding us through that way. Uh, I do lots of praying. Even when I do my healing work, I do lots of praying. And I, I know Jesus Christ is in my heart. I, you know, I'm a born again Christian. I have all the, that faith. But spirituality, we are spirits, right? We're these, we're these spirits having these human experiences right now. I think that's with the late Wayne Dyer. That's how he always talked about it. So, you know, we really, uh, people need to realize that the faith is really holding back so many people and getting stuck. And, and uh, you know, they have their faith and God bless them, you know, but there's so much more uh, to this universe where we can, uh you know, experience and we can, and have so much abundance in our life. When we open up and we just share our gifts, uh, think, miracles happen and they happen every day. Like I'm just so amazed at some of the things that I'm seeing in my life. And even in people like you, Tara, like I, I just, I've seen you grow and I've been watching you and I just go, oh, I'm just so happy for you. Like the thing <laughs> you know, you And I feel the so same about you. Yeah. I yeah. think back to the first time I saw you, I think it was at, at Knox Hall here in Weyburn. I'm just like, she looks so sad and lonely. Cause I, it wasn't very busy, I think, that week or whatever. But every time I looked, you were always alone. And I'm like, I just want to go and hug her. Aww. But now, like, look at it. We're just, like so busy and... Yeah. You know, we have yeah. to try and squeeze in business when we see each other. It's I fantastic. I know. And it's just expanding. Like our life is expanding and, and, and God's providing. He's bringing us the people that we need, to, you know, to share our gifts with. And, uh, and, and uh, the transformation of even our clients, like people will, I, I'm just so amazed at some of the transformations. It, it, it's just amazing to watch uh, how when they open up their heart space, all the goodness that can come 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 to their life so yeah i love that i'm glad you brought, talked about religion and spirituality because there's a lot that uh, people really struggle with that they you know fearful of the unknown and and that's really what's holding people back and and i had a struggle with it too and uh and now it's like well if you don't feel who cares you know yeah. I, I i believe in god and and god's gonna guide me and you know you have your journey i send them lots of love and light though you know, yeah. <laughs> help them on their path. So, you know, if people need to get a hold of you, they want to book a session or they need a clearing in their house or they need your services, can you tell us how we get a hold of you? Where do we, where do we go? Sure. Well, you can definitely inbox me on Facebook. I'm at um, from the, from the beyond messaging and healing services on Facebook, or you can just, text me or call me and that number is 306-861-3789 and I will eventually get a website back up <laughs> eventually awesome, awesome. you know yeah yeah well what I'll do is I'll make sure and I'll put the your Facebook uh link with this when I share the video when I put it on YouTube I'll share it I'll share it on Facebook I'll share it and put your um contact information there so that people know how to get a hold of you because I'm sure you're going to be really busy <laughs> everything you have to offer you did an amazing job is there anything else that we're missing spirits is there anything else that we need mm -hmm. to talk about to share you know uh you, you, your family how are they that something's coming to me it's, it's your family how are they now opening oh. up to everything that you're doing and, and sharing your abilities with others well I well, my dad, so it's funny, right? So you, you help find this missing person and then you don't know what's going to happen, right? So I was just like freaking out like, oh my God, what if the police come to my house and what if, you know, it's on the radio or something? I'm just like, I have to tell my family what I've done, right? And I was like, and I knew mom wasn't the one to start with. So I was out bowling with dad and I'm like, uh, dad, I have something to tell you. 
it was funny because he was asking me all these questions about it and and in between bowling and then when we were leaving he was we kind of talked a little bit more and then he goes well, let's not tell your mother this yet. But I'm okay with that, Dad. Just so that you know, so it's not a surprise, you know, if somebody says something or it's yeah. a small town and I'm just like, someone will say something or ask them something and I didn't want them to be blindsided. Um, yeah, that's awesome. Now, my husband is, has kind of turned around. He's a lot more supportive. Uh, he freak him out a little bit when I say, oh, there's something in the kitchen. You know, like there's an entity in the kitchen. Let's just leave them there. They're fine. He's like, oh. <laughs> you know, but he's more like I have my cards and then, uh, you know, my, my, my stones out, out in the living room now. And he's very supportive when I'm doing the expos. He'll come and help me, you know, get me there and stuff. And it's like, hey, I'm going out for a reading tonight. And he's So I think he's a little bit better with it now, especially after he sees how it's, I'm able to help people. And um, my daughters have always, always been, and my son have always been supportive from day one. But interestingly, interestingly enough, as my son has joined me in Reiki and access bars and he's stepping, I'm not supposed to say that because he wants to stay in the closet a little bit longer, but he actually became a Reiki master with me on the weekend. Cool. And he, I know he's working on some of his close friends, but he's just not ready to, to yeah. make it public knowledge, which probably after this will be too late, but you know, and he does fantastic at it too, but just, yeah. And, um, and mom a little bit, she, cause she used to, she used to say, well, I suppose you're, you're off fortune telling today or, you know, something like that. But her and dad have actually come to a couple of the expos. She wasn't too thrilled the first one she came to, but they're coming along and, yeah. it, and it was really cool. My dad came to this last one and he came in and I just walked around the building with him, you know, um, introducing him to the people that were, that were free and mm-hmm. kind of telling them him a little bit of what each at which everybody did. And then he said, okay, well, I have to go now because I'm feeling overwhelmed. <laughs> and it's like, uh, my dad's starting to feel energy. Yes, yes, <laughs> you know, yes. but he knew, he said, I know I need something. I just don't know what it is. And there's just too much here for me. Oh, so, wow. yeah, that's cool. Uh, that's so cool. You know, when you have that support, you can just continue doing your work. I just love it. Like my husband's supporting me. My daughter's done access bars and she's doing readings now too. She's finding her way too. So and you know, life is so much better when we have that that balance with with our with our home life, and then and then our energy healing work too. So, you know, Tara, you you've been amazing. I just I could talk to you for another hour. <laughs> an hour went by so fast, like I can't believe. Oh my goodness, it's been an hour already. Holy smokes, it did go by fast. <laughs> my timer but it's pretty close to eight o'clock but i just wanted to, i just want to tell the folks again this is tara newberger she lives in weyburn saskatchewan canada <laughs> Yay! <laughs> and i'm going to be posting her uh, facebook page uh and her phone number so you can get a hold of her for a session you do distance sessions too yes. tara yeah yeah yep. actually that my very first reading was through was via facebook Good, 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 good. Yeah. So yeah. So I've done I've done readings texting people too. Yeah, so exactly. You know, we got this social media. Let's use it. And and awesome. you know, energy is energy. And you can be in the same room with us. You can be miles and miles away. I have clients all over, uh, and I can do sessions with them because that's the way the energy works. That's the way the universe works. There's this tapestry. It's a universe and we're all connected. So the energy is connected. So yeah, it's amazing to have, you know, it's been so wonderful. Thank you for everything. I'm looking forward to watching this again and checking it out. <laughs> <laughs> well, you did a wonderful job. This is the first Angel Spirit show. So thank you viewers. Thank you, Tara. Uh, everyone just have a wonderful, wonderful evening and wherever you are, it might be, it might be daytime wherever you're watching this. So yeah. Take care and God bless. And thank you so much for being a guest, Tara. Well, thank you for having me on as a guest, Marina. It was an honor to be your first. I was totally excited when you said you were going to do that. I couldn't print off the questions and get them back to you fast enough. <laughs> I know. You were quick. Thank you so much. <laughs> you I bet. appreciate that. It really helped with the interview questions. So God bless and take care. And keep on doing your wonderful work and sharing your wonderful energy, your beauty with the universe, because you're amazing. You're amazing. So, so are you, Maureen. Thank you very much. Have a good night. You're welcome. Yeah, you too. God bless. You too. Bye-bye. See you. Bye. <laughs>